I'm back from three days long at the university clinic in Aachen, Germany. Three days long of getting tests, of having goggles on my eyes that have cameras pointed right at my eyes, filming what they do as they have me follow lights or pump everything from water to sounds and tones and vibrations into my ear. Um, I stood on different things that moved. I also walked on a mat connected to a computer so they could see what my feet do. I did a lot of tests. It was a tough three days, <laughs> not just because of the tests. Um, a lot of the tests are very simple, similar to like what, you know, drunk driving tests are uh, <laughs> or hearing tests. Um, I had some complications with that hospital and uh, I just don't like institutions. <laughs> but um, my first two days there were really kind of rough and I kind of thought that um, I was going to have to go elsewhere for help, but obviously I wanted every copy of my test, so I asked for every copy of my test, and they gave it to me, which was really cool. Uh, unfortunately, I don't understand half of this stuff, but um, it's good to know that I have really detailed stuff of what my eyes are doing, what my balance is doing, what my feet are doing. Um, and I can take this anywhere if I choose to go elsewhere. But I gotta say, uh, the last day of my three days in Aachen there, I finally met with uh, the head doctor of that department, Dr. Westhofer, and uh, two other really cool doctors. I kind of wish I knew the name because they were really good and nice. And um, they want to fix me. They, they blew my mind, quite honestly. So for like two years I've been looking for answers. I want to know why I, I, I feel this way. Unstable. Not mentally. Neat. But, you know, you know, people talk, I talk about vertigo, but I don't really have this like spinning. I have more like I'm on a boat and it gets worse when I move my head and stuff. And all of my visits to local doctors, it's like it just feels like they don't know what they're doing with me. So it was, um kind of cool to be in this clinic where they specialize in all of this and uh, what they said to me at the end was the type of tumor I had is kind of rare, um, affects everybody differently, you know, because they grow a little differently um, and they would like to look into if they can improve my quality of life, let's say. Um, what really blew my mind was they talked about looking into, no promises were made, but the possibility of me getting my hearing back. Um, possibly through, I, I believe, a, a cochl cochlear implant. <laughs> but they um, are still waiting for the results of a CT scan they did. Uh, the CT scan was better, apparently, than the one I just did like a month ago. This CT scan that they took went directly onto this balance organ area. They said they want to look at it in detail, what can be done there, if anything can be fixed. So, So maybe I got surgery again in the future that doesn't make me too happy but it doesn't make me nervous i'm more excited about holy crap i could hear again and anybody that knows me knows i love music i love music and i still listen to music but with one ear it's not the same it's just not the same so that was really exciting um again no promises were made i have to go back they want to strap me in a spinning stool in german it's called a drehstuhl um they, they, they claim that test will show them how much control I have over my balance. That should be interesting because I'm pretty strong muscle-wise and I've been working really hard on, like, my core. <laughs> but, but more like just feeling my center and pulling myself back. This has been two years long I've been, I've been like this, a little over. Um, so... Yeah, they want to put me into that stool, and the stool was broken when I was there. So we left it at, if I don't get a call by Thursday, I am to call them and make an appointment to go back there. Um, it was a lot of information, but uh, no clear, clear answers. Just confirmation that my eyes show, for example, in the way of when I try to look forward, they, they go up confirms them that I'm, I'm like, for example, not faking this. <laughs> um, really shitty was that after three days long of doing all of these tests, I came home, 
that was a Friday, I was in bed by 8 or 9, which hasn't isn't that uncommon for me these days ever since all this stuff. I, I get tired, and the second I lay down, I pretty much fall asleep. Um, but Saturday I woke up and I just had a migraine, a migraine all day. The ringing in my ear was obscenely louder than usual, and my balance... So I've been joking that like for the last two years my balance is similar to somebody who's had like two or three beers. You know, you're not quite drunk, but whoopsie, you bump into stuff. You can still kind of control it though. But after these tests, man, Saturday, like I was, I was walking into stuff. Every third step, I was, I was kind of losing it. I'm still laughing about it because it, it, it is kind of ridiculous how I look <laughs> when I try to do things fast because I still try to do things fast because my brain is still apparently like attention deficit disorder style and my body's like, no. <laughs> I'm repeatedly bumping my elbows and my knees and... But anyway, so the good thing is I survived three days. Three days in that institution. <laughs> getting tests, um, fought against some bad attitudes, but in the end it was all worth it. I, uh, feel a little hopeful that they might be able to fix some things. I was, um, let's see, they, they just confirmed that I am still deaf in this year. Um, they labeled me having facial paralysis grade three. I didn't know what that meant, so I looked it up online, and I found some funny videos on YouTube, uh, about uh, facial paralysis grading, like from the 70s, and it just depends on like what works here or whatever, but um, I'm curious to see what they'll fix. I, I like for the last year, was kind of starting to believe that I was just going to have to live with all these things. I'm deaf in one ear, and this side of my face is effed up, <laughs> although it does seem to keep making improvements, and I keep being told that the, the nerves in the face grow only like a millimeter a year, so they're very slow growing, so I guess there could still be improvement, but my forehead doesn't, doesn't want to do nothing, <laughs> not in there, nothing, uh, but it'll be interesting to see what they could fix. I, I would like very much if my nausea feeling would be gone. <laughs> um, I would love if I get my hearing back, but right now, we gotta wait. I wait for a phone call, wait to make some more appointments, go down and get some more tests, and then they want to talk about where we go from there. Do we go to, like, surgery to start correcting things? Um, and they also want to talk about rehabilitation with me, which is something I should have done from the beginning. I was offered it right after my operation, um, but after I had spent, like, two weeks in that hospital in Bielefeld after they took out the acoustic neuroma and I just wanted to go home. I wanted to go home and be with my boy and be with my cats <laughs> um, and I just didn't. I had one bad experience also in this country once doing something like that where they send you to these clinics for rehabilitation for a couple of days. I was just done and I felt like crap and I wanted to go home. I think as anybody would after a major surgery um, but now I realize that might not have been the smartest. I, I need some help, uh, not just in, like, retraining my body. I want to keep on this, like, so my body stays strong and I can catch myself when I'm losing my balance. Um, but also I'm not eating right. I think it's because I feel constantly nauseous, because I feel constantly like I'm on a boat, but I'm really not eating right. Like, I don't really get, like, hungry, um... And, uh, I'm pretty much just shoving food in because I know if I don't and I leave the house, I'm gonna fall over. So, that's all I got. That's my update. <sighs> my voice sounds funny or I seem sleepy. It's because I am. It's 7 a.m. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. That's where we are. My mind's kind of spinning around all of it. But, uh, let's all just keep our fingers crossed that maybe they can fix some of these things and I can get back to living a normal life. A lot of my customers from my job have been contacting me again. I think I'm going to set a day to paint with them as we do. kind of miss them. I'm not made for this just sitting at home stuff. I'm really not. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, thanks for watching my video. Thanks for, you know, everybody's support. 
feel really lucky with all the people that support me. My friend Dinga Laura has been driving me to all of my appointments, making sure I make it there. All my friends and family on Facebook that have been just supporting me through all of this crap. Um, I really appreciate it. And uh, I think we're getting closer to fixing Christy. So stay tuned and take care of yourself.